through. Hope you all had a nice uh, holiday break and good start to the new year so far. And uh, we'll go ahead and get things rolling here in a sec. We've got uh, Devontae Carter standing by. He'll jump in after Coach. Um, obviously, the Spartans are 4-3 and three, heading into this weekend's games against Morgan State to start conference play after their win over George Mason on the 26th. So uh, we can start off, I guess, Coach, uh, with maybe just some thoughts on your non-conference schedule, how that went, and maybe a quick look ahead to, uh, to Morgan. Um, I think the non-conference schedule went, you know, okay. Uh, you know, I think that having a Virginia-based non-conference schedule, we were able to get four out of five wins was a, a pretty good feat, you know, for especially going against teams that we normally wouldn't play. I would have liked to got five out of five, but it didn't happen. Um, I do think that we could have probably even did better than non-conference. You know, even though we were four and three, I think that we could have probably been, you know, of course, I think we could have been seven and zero, but at least, you know, six and one. I think that um, the three games that we lost, we lost on, on the boards. You know, we, we lost by double digits on the boards. And that's like one of our Achilles heels going into the to, um, conference play that we've been working diligently to, to try to shore up a little bit because, you know, everything else is okay, you know, at this point. But just trying to shore up their rebounding. And if we do, I think that we're going to be a real tough out uh, going forward in, in conference play. All right. Uh, Scott, you want to lead us off? Go, go right ahead. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned rebounding. Uh, what else have you learned about your team uh, through preseason and out through the uh, first seven games that you have actually played? Uh, some resilience, a little bit. Um, I think that, um, you know, when we were down on the road against George Mason, you know, 14 or 16, whatever whatever it was, and we were able to come back and win that game against a quality opponent, I think that showed some resilience. Also, um, which, which I hate to say at this point, our our away record is better than our home record. So you got to kind of you know you got to kind of be tough when you win on the road, you know. So um, it shows that we do have you know some toughness to our to our team, um, you know. But besides that, some of the flaws, you know, definitely the rebounding and um, just maintaining the focus for the you know the whole forty minutes, and understanding what's, what's you know what's at hand. What's it like? Um, I think I counted that you've had four games postponed so far, and I mean. At, at any day, even when it's not a, a pandemic, you can't take anything for granted. But is that even more so the case right now? Oh, without question. I mean, everything is, you know, it's like we're talking about the Morgan State game. You know, I tell people all the time, it's, we're tentatively scheduled to play Morgan State. I mean, it, it might say it's on the schedule, but everything is tentative right now, you know. So we hope that we will we will play Morgan State. I know we got to get through another, uh, another round of COVID testing uh, for us on Monday. I mean, not Monday, Friday. And um, I think Morgan has to do the same thing. So hopefully both teams are able to pass those tests to be able to play um, this weekend. So, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a disappointment when you don't play because, you know, you look at the schedule and it hasn't been any time in my, in my career that you make a schedule and you don't play the schedule, <laughs> you know? So it's like, that's just been strange a little bit. You know, we still, you know, we just added a game the other day. You know, we're still adding games. We haven't even got to the 13 game minimum yet that NCAA wants you know, you to play. Like right now we had seven, so we have to figure out how to make sure we play six more games to even get to the minimum to be able to play in postseason um, if we're fortunate enough to have the opportunity. So every game is a, it's like a countdown to six, <laughs> you know, to try to like get six more games so we're able to get to 13 to be able to play. Rob, how much have you been around the, the MEAC? And uh, if so, how, how do you feel like you match up in general? Um, I think we match up just as good as anybody, um, uh, you know, across the conference. I think that, uh, you know, every team plays different schedules. You know, we play probably like a good, you know, mid-major plus type schedule. You know, um, FAMU has, has played a couple BCS schools, you know, so it's, you know, you got to look and, you know, kind of dissect those those things a little bit too. And there's people who play lesser schedules than us. I mean, there's been a lot of people who play a lot of non-division ones and things like that. So. Um, you know, but just from an overall talent standpoint and, and where we're at right now and where everybody else is at, I think that we, uh, you know, are definitely still in, a, in the upper echelon of the of the league. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, of course, you know, Morgan is pretty good, in my opinion. Um, Central is pretty good, even though they haven't played in a long time. You know, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I think A&T is solid. You know, and I think the sleeper is FAMU. You know, um, down in Florida A&M, they, they've, they've had some, some good uh, wins. and you know, they've also had some, some close – maybes, you know, almost wins against some very good opponents. So, um, you know, I think they're a sleeper down in, in, in the South. Coach, 
coach anybody that's been paying attention knows the success you guys have had, especially in conference play, you know, on your watch. This year, though, going into the year, you guys are picked to win the win the division. Now that we are starting conference play, yeah. I wonder if uh, if there's an extra bounce in, in the Spartan step, uh, assuming we do actually get to start conference play. Yeah, assuming because uh, clearly we didn't start last week, right? So, um, you know, I can't say it's an extra bounce because I think you start to get that bounce. Like if you go two and zero or one and zero, you know, like you start to get that bounce for like okay, because everybody once you when, once you start one and zero, two and zero, everybody has the dreams of sixteen and zero, you know. So then you start to get that bounce a little bit, but um, right now, you know, there's no real extra bounce about uh, conference play right now. I mean, to be honest with you, we're just trying to just keep getting better every day so we could go out there and have a good showing um, this weekend against a quality, you know, opponent. Now, I do think conference play is going to be going to be tougher? You know, I think that, like you said, we've been pretty fortunate and pretty good in conference play, you know, with our win percentage and things like that. But now you have to play somebody four times, you know, and if you want to keep that win percentage, you're going to have to beat them three out of four times, you know, to keep that 75% win percentage type thing. And to beat somebody three out of four is tough. I mean, you know, I mean, you got to hope you beat somebody four out of four, you know, <laughs> you know, um, you got to hope you don't go one for four against somebody or over four, you know, and, and the splits are different. Like we talked about it the other day in, in, in our, um, team meeting that every game, every every team is a series and we want to win every series and the only way to win it is to by going three out of four if you go two for two you didn't win the series you just tied it you know if you go anything less than that then you lost you know so um, we want to definitely try to win every series that we play I want to go back to what you were saying about the you know kind of the countdown to get to that 13 game minimum yeah you know looking at, looking at the calendar uh, I think folks would you know uh, assume that you're good but we all know that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. At what point do you really start to to worry and concern yourself uh, about getting to that that number? Every game that's postponed, every game that's canceled. You know, you start because I mean, right now I think we should be at maybe ten games, maybe or something like that. You know, that we should have played. So that thirteen number is, is is a lot shorter. Maybe even more than that, honestly, with, with the games that were canceled. Because we we had Regent canceled, we had William and Mary canceled, and we might have had one more. But then we had um, you know both Howard games canceled. So we would be close to that 13 number now, but like we're at the halfway point right now. So, you know, hopefully we could play two this week and that's nine. Now we got to pray for four more, you know, and, and stuff. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Rob, will the uh, power games be made up? Yeah, we're working on dates right now. Um, actually, I was, when you know, when you guys clicked on, I was actually texting with the, the Howard coach um, about potential dates to, to, to work on it. So we're, we're, we're you know, going to figure it out and get it to our administration so we can reschedule the games and things like that. But we, we definitely got to play, Dave. We can't go down there and play them twice at their place and they don't come here. I mean, that's cheating, man. Can't do that. <laughs> oh. uh, Dominion uh, last weekend lost by 15 one night, came back and won the next night. Do you look forward to the challenge of having to gear up for teams twice in a row like this, and <laughs> and uh, you know potentially turning the turning the table like that? That's something that we talk about with the team all the time. Honestly, is that um, you know when you win that first game, or if you God forbid you lose the first game of us, you know like you want to have a you gotta have a really short memory to get back to playing and understand that this is a totally different game, the second game, you know. If, even if you win the first game by 30, you know, can you pencil in the second game? No, you have to go and try to do it again. And then the thing is, four weeks from now, you got to go do it again. You know, so it's like, it's a whole different dynamic this year to conference play. You know, like you said, we've had some good success in conference, but that really means nothing when you're playing back to back. I mean, the, the biggest thing with us is that we like to try to have good preparation for the game, especially conference play. You know, so there is no preparation for that Sunday game. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of preparation for Saturday, but there is none for Sunday. So now you got to go and, you know, everything is like, you know, it's changes on the fly and maybe a, a quick film session. Maybe you have a shoot around. Maybe you don't, you know, things like that. So um, this this weekend is like is our trial run. Like we don't, you know, we, we have a schedule in mind of what we should do, you know, as far as shoot around, you know, film, things like that. But once again, we haven't we haven't done this before. So this is our trial run. And then next weekend, you know, we'll make the proper adjustments or keep the same thing if it, if it works out.
right. Any other questions for Coach at this point? I got one more, Matt. Sure. Of course you do, Dave. Of course you do. This is a little weird, though. I'm do just think, messing with you. Um, Do you think suits on the sideline are a thing of the past, or is that just a fishier thing? That's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, AD um, uh, Melody Webb asked me about that yesterday, um, and, and one of our you know talks. And I think that it's going to transcend to like not having suits on the sideline. And the reason why I say that because some of, some of the coaches that are like a, you know the powerful players in this game um, kind of like not having suits on. You know, some of them always question why do we wear suits anyway? You know, like we're we're coaching a sport and. If I'm not mistaken, we're like the only sport that actually wears suits on the on the sideline. If I'm not mistaken, you know. So I know like volleyball kind of does what they want to do a little bit. Some people dress up, some people don't. But it's like almost in, in basketball, everybody is like, if you're a man, you're wearing a suit. If you're a woman, you're wearing like a dress and heels and things like that. And I'm trying to figure out who made that rule up. You know, who made that up? You know. So um, I think everybody's trying to figure that out at this point because everybody's kind of comfortable. You know, with your slacks on and your sneakers or your, your slacks and shoes or your, 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 I mean, some people are wearing sweatpants. I, I haven't went to the sweatpants thing or whatever, but there's some teams that do that and things like that. I mean, everybody's real, real comfortable. And, you know, it cuts down on your dry cleaning bill a lot, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that a lot. <laughs> so. You could be like baseball and just, uh, you know, wear a basketball uniform. Nah, man. I, then I got to wear a jersey with my chest hairs out. I ain't trying to do all that, man. <laughs> Isn't there something too though about like the national TV games? I mean, coach, you got a great style. I mean, don't you want to show that off a little bit too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I got a couple of nice pieces now, you know. So, I mean, but but I think we you know we try to put together and make it like um, you know we try to all be uniforms on the sideline. You know, we're not trying to do like you know somebody got on you know green and somebody has on white and go you know. So I think we 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 we're aesthetically pleasing you know when we're on camera you know so. We gotta try to keep doing, um, you know, keep doing that, man. I guess next year, though, I guess you know, if we do keep this up. Uh, speaking of Melody Webb, she's gonna expect a bigger equipment bill because we're gonna buy way more polos and stuff like that uh, next year. So she gonna expect that already. <laughs> next step is to be like Mike Bray. He wore uh, khaki shorts last weekend. Could I'm not gonna wear the shorts though. <laughs> I'm not wearing the shorts. I'll, I'll wear the the, the rest the, the khakis and the shoes and sneakers, but I'm not wearing shorts, man. I'm not doing that. All right. All right, guys. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll let Coach go, and we'll uh, we'll see you on Saturday. All right. Cool. Thanks.